Yo, what is up guys? Delboy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So, Filip Hergovic finally returns to the ring on the 10th of September. First time in the ring since 7th of November 2020 when he fought that fat journeyman, Rydell Booker. Now, the last 18 months or so in regards to Hergovic's career has been extremely frustrating. The guy has not been active, as we know. Partly that was down to COVID last year, I understand that. But in the last 18 months or so, Filip Hergovic just hasn't pushed on as a professional. He joined the pro ranks with a lot of hype, as we know, due to his amateur pedigree. But so far, he's really found it hard to gain momentum in the professional ranks. And let's be honest, it's mainly down to external circumstances and not down to the fault of Filip Hergovic, from what we understand. But nevertheless, as a boxing fan and as a guy who rates Filip Hergovic relatively highly, it's definitely frustrating. But he's returning on the 10th of September against an unbeaten guy by the name of Marco Radonic from Montenegro. Now, Radonic has a perfect record of 22-0 with 22 knockouts, so on paper, it sounds good, it sounds great, but ultimately Marko Radonic has fought absolutely nobody of any consequence. When you look at his record, man, he's been feasting on bums upon bums upon bums. I mean, the guy's barely fought a guy with a winning record. I think he's got like three fights over a guy with winning records in 22 fights. So that goes to show the level of competition in which Marko Radonic has been facing. So ultimately, I expect this fight to be a squash. I expect Filip Pergovic to win this fight in devastating fashion and early on. I'm not expecting anything from Marko Radonic whatsoever. And ultimately, it is a disappointing opponent for Filip Pergovic. But at the end of the day, at least he's back in the ring. As I said, man, the last few months have been extremely frustrating for him. Last year with COVID, this year it looked like it was... Um, heading in the right direction for Filip Pergovic. Of course, originally he was supposed to fight Michael Hunter in an IBF eliminator. Michael Hunter basically dicked him around for weeks upon weeks upon weeks, only to pull out and duck Filip Pergovic. Subsequently, after that, everybody ranked below Michael Hunter, ducked Filip Pergovic for a shot at an IBF final eliminator. So as far as I'm concerned, the guys who were offered the Hergovic fight in the IBF rankings Anybody who turned it down, in my opinion, should be stripped of their rankings. I mean, otherwise, what's the point being in the rankings if you're not going to take a final eliminator? What's the point being ranked if you don't want to fight for that sanctioning body title or get in a position to fight for that title? What's the point? All of these guys who avoided Hergovic, in my opinion, should be stripped of their position. And quite frankly, Filip Hergovic should have a mandatory status anyway right now because everyone ducked him and he should have that mandatory position by way of forfeit. What can you do if nobody's willing to fight you in an eliminator? Does your career have to be put on hold because these guys are too pussy to fight you? Because that's what's going to happen. They're going to try and rejig the rankings and offer the Hergovic fight to somebody else in an eliminator. You know, so Hergovic's career has basically been put on hold because these guys are too pussy to fight. Let's be real. And, um, I mean, some of the, na some of the names who, who avoided this fight, it makes no sense to me. Like, the likes of Luis Ortiz, man, a guy at the tail end of his career with no marketability. God knows how old he is. I mean, I think the guy's listed as, like, 40, 41 years old. He looks a lot older than that to me, man. This guy was more than likely on the undercard of David versus Goliath. But this guy, yeah, who certain people were fucking calling the boogeyman for, like, six years straight... He turns down a fight with some unproven Croatian kid. Imagine calling this guy the boogeyman only for him to do that. And bear in mind as well, this guy turned down a shot at Anthony Joshua for the unified heavyweight championship of the world. Uh, I mean, yeah, the whole the whole um, Filip Hergovic situation is completely un unsatisfactory to me as a boxing fan. It's been a complete fucking joke from start to finish. And in my opinion, you might as well just give Filip Hergovic his IBF Mando status. Because like I said, to me it doesn't seem just to put this guy's career on hold because everybody else is too pussy. Um, but nevertheless, 
This opponent choice, Marco Radonic, I mean, listen, I get Filip Hergovic needs to be active, but surely, surely we could do we could do better than Marco Radonic. I mean, Marco Radonic is ranked like 229 on BoxRec. This guy's a fucking bum beater, and more than likely he's a bum himself. I mean, surely, surely we could do better than Marco Radonic. Even someone like Marius Vak would be a much better fight than this clown. At least Marius Wack is, you know, an experienced dude, granite chin, been around, you know, he can go rounds. It's a good it's a good stay busy fight for, for Filip Hergovic, but again, man, I get that Hergovic has been ducked like the plague, but you can't tell me they couldn't do better than Marco Radonic. I mean, who the fuck is that guy in all seriousness? I mean, Filip Hergovic, man, his promoters, uh, the Sowland brothers, Wasserman, whatever the fuck they're called now, and Eddie Hearn have done a piss poor job with Filip Hergovic, in my opinion. I personally believe Filip Hergovic would have been much better suited to a promotional organisation like Top Rank. I think they would have kept him a lot more active and more than likely found him better opponents, but come on, man. I, I like Filip Hergovic. I, I sympathise with his plight in regards to the IBF rankings and not getting uh, an opponent for the Eliminator. I sympathise with that. But, surely, man, we can do better than this. This is absolute garbage. Absolute garbage, man. But that's boxing for you. That's boxing. It is what it is. Ultimately, this year is basically a write-off for Filip Hergovic. I'd like to see him fight at least once more this year after this fight, but I'm not counting on it. So, hopefully, 2022 is the year of Filip Hergovic where we can actually find out how good this guy is. I like his ability, what I see on, on, on VI, I think he's a good prospect, but ultimately I don't know, personally, I, I, I don't know until he steps up, and I'm just getting impatient, waiting for Filip Hergovic to get a fight that we actually care about as boxing fans, and hopefully that happens soon, you know, but ultimately I'm not counting on it, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, share your thoughts below, it's been you guy Del Boy. Are you excited for the return of Filip Hergovic? Are you at least pleased he's back in the ring? I am personally, but again, it's not a great fight, is it? But I'm glad he's back, but again, I'm sure they could have done a bit better. Anyway, share your thoughts below. Tell me what you think about the Hergovic situation, his career right now, etc, etc. Share your comments below. Been your guy, Del Boy. Peace.